Hello Ross developers and welcome to the Ross questions and answers video series. If you want to learn anything about Ross, this is your channel. Ross navigation, Ross with drones, Ross for autonomous cars, everything Ross is here. Learn Ross step by step and push your Ross learning in just 10 minutes of video. I am Alberto and today we are going to be checking a question I found in the Ross answers forum, which is this one. It says wait to output odometry info. But before anything else, remember to visit the Robot Ignite Academy our online academy where you will find practical online ROS courses using the simulated robots. No installation required. You will find a link to the academy on the video description. And now, yeah, now yes, let's go with the video. So as always, let's move to the ROS development studio, ROS DS. And here I already have a project prepared. Let me come here which is called Output Odometry, which I am going to share uh, with all of you in the video description as well, so that you can open it the same as I have it. Well, I will put it a little bit nicer, the look of it. And yeah, so once you open this project, let me close this. There we have it. No. So here, basically, Let's open an ID and a shell. We have a very basic package, you'll see here. Uh, it's named Odometry Subscriber, which only has a simple C++ script called Odomsub, which is this one. And basically what he says is, hello, anyone knows how we can output odometry da data via type of geometry messages strung from a stampet or nav messages odometry? Uh, suppose that we have these two geometry messages from Odom Trans Nav mess well this is a bit confusing. But well, and what I want to do is that for example we don't need to list every uh, of the position info with something like okay, so what what I have understood here is that he don't he doesn't want to print the whole odometry message, but only some part of the odometry message, for instance the position in X. Yeah? So how to do this? And I guess it's with C++ because of how these uh, message types are write. So yeah, let's try to to do this. And for this, I have this example. But before anything else, uh, let me open a simulation here with the empty world. And as for instance, the turtle one. I, I know for sure it has the odometry topic. Let's wait a few seconds here. There we go. It's still spawning the daughter bot into the simulation. Okay, great. So now we can go to our topic list and we will see here that we have this odom topic. Yeah. And the structure of the topic info odom. If we look for some information, you will see that here we are publishing nav messages odometry. Yeah, which is this type he mentions here the nav messages odometry, the odometry message from the nav messages package. Yeah, so we now we can do a ROS, um, message show of the NAF messages odometry, and we see that it's a quite big message with many fields. As you can see, we have here a, a header, a frame ID, child frame ID, sorry, the pose, the twist, with many things inside them as well. So how can we do in order to print just one part of the message? For instance, uh, this X. I only want to visualize this X, yeah, which is inside the position, inside the pose, inside the pose, etc. Yeah. So I I understand that this is what this user is asking, a, a riffle. So yeah, I have built here a very basic uh, C++ script. As you can see, it's a basic subscriber. Here we have the main, where we initiate the node, we uh, here create the subscriber to the odom topic, yeah? And we uh, associate it to this counter callback function, 
which we are defining up here, and then we just spin forever so that uh, this program doesn't end and it keeps reading all the messages published into the odom topic. Yeah? So each time a new message is published into the odom topic, this counter callback function will be called. Then here we have the callback function where we receive the message here, and as you can see, it's an F messages odometry and it's a pointer. Yeah? This is a pointer. Then we will receive the the message from the odometry topic into this message variable. Yeah? Then we can access this message variable like this message with this arrow. This is very important because it is a pointer, so we need to use this arrow. And then once we are inside this message, we can access each field with points. So for instance, here we are accessing first header, part of the message, and from the header, the frame ID. So we are accessing first the header, and inside the header, we access the frame ID. Yeah? In the same way, we have it here commented right now, but first of all, we enter the message. Let me uncomment this for one second yeah so here we uncomment this uh, uh, sorry we enter the message with the arrow yeah because it is a pointer and then we first access the twist uh, value the, the twist message which is this one the first twist let me actually put it here so that we can see it better yeah so First of all, we access the twist here. Then inside the twist, again, we access the second twist message, which is twist, twist. Then the next step, what will be? Linear, right? We have gone from twist to twist to linear. Here we have it, linear. And finally, to the X, inside the linear message to the X, yeah? So this is basically how you access each part of the message, yeah? First of all, you have the pointer for the for the odometry message, where we, where you will receive whatever is published into the odometry topic, which it, it has to be, of course, an odometry message, this type of message, but this is a pointer. And then uh, from this message variable, we access it using the arrow because it is a pointer. And then we can access each, uh, each field of the message using uh, dots, as you can see here. Yeah. And for instance, here uh, we are using the conversion to a string because in this case, the frame ID is an string, as you can see here. This is a float, so here we don't need to convert it to a string. Now, let's test it. Let's see if this works as expected. So we have the simulation running. Um, let's go to the hacking workspace and compile in case it's not compiled. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry. So let me just, uh, in order to verify that everything is working as expected, let me subscribe directly from the command line to the own topic. Print only one message. So here we have a full message, which is published, has been published right in the moment I executed the command. And as we can see here, we have the header, the post message, the twist message. So in this case, we are accessing to the header frame ID value, which is this one here, header, inside the header, the frame ID. So it is odom. So in theory, if this doesn't change over the time, which it shouldn't, as you can see here, it is still odom. So in our program, we should be here printing constantly this odom string, yeah, which is the frame ID inside the header. So let's try this. Let's Ross run Odom subscriber and Odom sub node. And here we have it. So it's printing this Odom, which is the frame ID of the header. Yeah. Then, for instance, let's now change this to the position. Let's uncomment here the position in X. And uh, we will need to recompile again. So Let's recompile this. There we go. 
And now we are going to be printing this uh, pose, pose position x, this value here, which right now it's zero because we are not moving the robot, it's in the center of the, of the world. So the position in x is zero. So let me source this and let's run again our program. And now we should see this, this zero position, as you can see. And for instance, if I start moving the robot forward in the x-axis, let me do it very quickly. So let's start moving this robot forward. You should start moving forward. There we have it. So now we will see how this value keeps increasing. You see, now it will turn one because it's moving forward in the x-axis. Yeah, so let's stop it again. There we go. And now it will again keep static at three meters uh, dot three, as you can see here. Yeah, so yeah, this is working as expected. And as you can see, it's very simple to access the different fields of the message. The most important part is to remember that this uh, here we are using a pointer, yeah? So we need to access it using the arrow. And why we do this? Well, basically because for messages that are huge, it's not recommended to copy the full message, but it's better to create a pointer, yeah? So yeah, that's all for the video of today. I hope you've learned something new, you've liked it. If so, please remember to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and for any comments, suggestions, questions, leave it down below in the comments area. And uh, yeah, remember that. Remember also that I'm going to share the link to open this project in the video description. And that's all. See you in the next video. Goodbye.